Disclaimer, this video will not be including benchmarks of the GPU. I had a ton of driver issues and ran out of time to get this card benched. However, we did end up getting it to work in a special build, so stay subscribed if you want to see some actual benchmarks. Again, my apologies, just take this as a card overview video. In a time where PC gaming is arguably at the top of the chain when it comes to bringing the best experience possible for gamers, many people are left in the dark playing games at lower resolutions based on their PC's hardware. There are many videos out there teaching you how to build the ultimate budget PC from scratch to be able to perform very well in today's PC titles. But what if you're in a particular scenario where you are given a pre-built system for free and you want to make the most out of this gift? In comes the RX 460, an extremely low power video card with a very competitive price tag. Is this the card that the 750 Ti was, and in some cases still is? Let's find out. What is up guys, Matt here from the Toasty Bros, and I'm here to give you my review of the Sapphire Nitro Radeon RX 460. Let's get right into the video. The RX 460 comes in at a time that AMD is trying to punch back at the competition with their release of Pascal, and it seems to be targeted at the mainstream 1080p gamers who want a low power, no compromise experience with all the features AMD has to offer. The video card itself has 896 stream processors, a 14 nanometer design just like the rest of the RX line, and a base clock of 1175 MHz and a boost clock of 1250 MHz. AMD also packs this card with FreeSync capability, DX12 Vulkan, and their HDR feature on their 4th gen GCN architecture. All these features are staples of its bigger brothers, the RX 480 and 470, and seem to bring the no compromise experience that AMD needs to deliver to budget gamers to capture a market that Nvidia fails to nail most of the time. This version of the RX 460 requires a single 6 pin for external power even though the card as a whole only requires a power consumption of 75 watts. Other models of this card that don't come pre-overclocked will be able to run without any external power from a 6 pin, making it a very compelling option for those with lower wattage power supplies in a pre-built system. As for the aesthetic of the Nitro RX 460, it comes in a very compact all black design with two 90mm fans. This card is compact enough to fit in most pre-built systems that I can think of, and a great airflow design to work in a crowded case. Being that this card has a very low power draw, I can confidently say that this card really won't bother you too much with the huge heat output. As I mentioned, I was not able to benchmark this card in time because of driver complications. I had an OS corruption and we needed to use this card for a very special video coming out very shortly. Let's just say this card would be a little bit too slippery to benchmark in my system. But I hope you guys stay subscribed to check out the official benchmarks of this system. Once that video is out, I'll be sure to include a link in the description where you can check out the performance tests. Until then, I will leave links to other creators who have benchmarked this card. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Leave a like if you like this video and subscribe to stay up to date to all the Toasty Bros content. Thanks again guys. Peace out.